segment we're mostly covering the theories and strategies and where we're really covering our striking techniques at, as in we have a, a, a straight fist which we line the, these two knuckles up with the arm and actually the, the knuckles aren't flat here because if they were flat here this knuckle would be hitting instead of this knuckle so we have to bring it down a bit so this knuckle here would be hit. So we'd like it to be one straight object. So when we hit somebody, if we're hitting him vertical or horizontal or re reverse, it all depends on our position. We've been covering all these strikes. We don't just use our arm. Like in, in your snapping techniques, it's, it's most, most the arm. But quite often, we lock and hit with our whole body. So when we do our techniques, we hit with our body. So apart from our straight fist, we have a spear thrust. So usually what happens after you hit things for a while, your, your hands will fold up so that your three main fingers are hitting flat at the same time. If you practice hitting walls and things like that, you'll end up doing that. Because if it's straight out and this finger's longer, then it's going to take the brunt of all the techniques. So, the force of what you're hitting. So in this position, when you're doing a spear thrust, a spear thrust could be poking into the throat. You could spear thrust inside into the diaphragm. You can spear th thrust into the armpits. You can spear thrust into different points. It's uh, an effect effective technique, but it's nothing that you want to lock your whole body and gen generate. Now, another thing that we do is it's sort of like a pecking. So it's your loose and then you tighten up your finger at the last point. So pecking is sort of like you could peck somebody on the head or in the temple. You're rolling around on the ground, you don't got much room and then you just loosen up your hand and you peck with this, these fingers. And you can keep pecking somebody in the same spot, it gets annoying after a while. Apart from pecking, we also have palm strikes. Now our palm strike, usually the angle that we utilize is the same angle that comes off the back leg and the back leg thrusts us forward striking the palm into our opponent. So if somebody was his size and I think, well, I don't really want to fight him. I want to get the punch fight finished as quick as possible. I would check this hand his, from his lead leg and come straight through with that palm strike, but I would be digging it up. But my body is getting lower as my hand's coming out. So it's not like I'm lifting off my, my feet to, to get height. Make sure that you're getting your power from your body going lower and your arm coming upwards. So your palm strike is uh, a fairly simple one. It's usually used, used under the chin, but you could use it into the base of the skull and other points. Uh, apart from that, we also have a hammer fist. So it, it's hitting this part of the hand. And if you're loose, like when we were doing our fire technique, you can still get that snap. The snap usually happens like if he punches me from this side, I'd come around and I'd snap him into the kidneys. If, again, he could come to punch me and I could come in this position and snap him into the base of the skull. But I'd most likely want to do something uh, in a backhand with, with the hammer fist. So if he comes from the other side and I move in this position here, I could come and use a hammer fist to rattle his noggin. So most times, even if, if you wanted to, there's a, a knife edge. The knife edge is used on chopping, like into the carotid artery, jugular vein, and you can do an inside strike too. So if I was moving in this position, or if I moved all the way up from here, we could use what's called the ridge hand, which is hitting on this side of the hand, coming in again to the carotid artery in this position. From here, I could pseudo chop this way. I can come straight with a blade on the angle, locking my body, I'll hit him in the pack to, to show you the power, into his carotid artery, hitting in this position. So with all these different striking techniques, each technique is a weapon. Each weapon fits a different point in the body. So there's certain things where I wouldn't come to snap him in his pectoral, or come to snap him in his stomach, uh, his abdominal muscles it wouldn't be that effective. So I'd make sure that if I was going to hit him, there's a place and time for each strike. So when we had our snap, snap strikes, they were striking into the bones. If we wanted to, if I wanted to hurt 
him in, in a different way because these are explosive strikes. If I wanted to center mass him, I'd strike him with my locked up body. If I wanted to come and just do a, like a, a flick with my fingers to his eyes, it would be loose. Everything has to uh, fit. So it's like, I'm not going to try to punch him here in this position from a circular motion because it wouldn't be as effective as loosening and hitting with this hammer fist. Now I could have came with a hammer fist here as well, but it wouldn't be as, as effective as me coming straight through with my whole body. So if you're in a position, if I wanted to strike him and say I wanted to come up under his nose into his septum with these two knuckles, that would have worked. So these two knuckles are going to fit in a specific situation. So you have all these tools that are going to fit. It's, it's like one of those games that people have on their kids. Uh, there's a circle, a square, a, tri a triangle, and you know, they each fits into its own specific point. So all your strikes have to fit. If I wanted to come across to, let's say, give him a shooto chop to his neck, I'm not just going to come here and do this shooto chop and leave myself open where I could be hit. I'd have to be in a position that I could move. If, if he came to punch me, I could move and be in this position. Now even here, I can't shoot a chop here because his hand is covering it. So I move with my body in this position so that I can reach the point that I want to strike. So you have to be aware. There's a lot of hits and strikes that are utilized that you just don't make them fit just because you want to do them. They have to be somebody provides an opportunity. So if he came to punch and I came in this position here to striking him with a straight fist, since he's bent over this way, I can strike him with just this one knuckle. At the same time, as I have to be able to now get outside of this hand where I would strike him from here because that's what I have. If, or I could have come from an elbow as long as I'm applying pressure on this arm because if I didn't apply pressure with this arm and I went to album, it would give him this opportunity. So you always have to be aware of what your opponent can do when you're utilizing these strikes. In this situation, somebody may be very close to you uh, in a bar or something like that. Some people come up and say, what are you looking at? And you got to be aware of head butts and things like this. But looking at this situation and you're you never ever put your hands in your pocket, your hands behind your back, you always have your hands up. Now this guy is coming to punch me, and as he comes to punch me, I have to come up with my elbow. Because I don't have time to really make this come around. And then one motion, when he comes to come up, I come up with my elbow. So the elbow, without e even using his hand, this elbow comes this way. So from the other side, the elbow comes straight in. So if you're th this close, like... Normally people are fighting from this distance, but sometimes people get in here and they act like they're not going to, and they come there to do stupid hits. So make sure that your hands are in, up in, in front of you. Uh, you know, you could be, hey, I don't, I don't want any trouble or whatever the case may be. But we like to be in this position and when he comes to punch you, you have to do what we call an elbow roll. So what's happening is the, the punch is coming at me and I roll my elbow. My body's moving around it in this position here. And from the other side, it's moving around it here. Now as it moves around, you can come in and strike him across the jaw with your elbow. Each time, when he comes to punch and moves around, you can grab onto his wrist and pull him through into your elbow. If uh, he so choose to do so. When he comes around, just pull him in and stretch big stretch like this and you'll hit them with your elbow. So quite often we utilize elbows in our theories and strategies and when we're up close it's usually elbows. It's either going to be straight in, straight through with the elbow or the elbow can come even upwards. The, the elbow can come from one side and back each time. If you're a bit further away, if he comes to punch, you just put your elbow where he's punching. Like if he's punching my face, I just put my elbow in front of where my face is. So each time if he's punching from the other side, you're just bringing up, as soon as he punches, don't think of blocking. So it's not like he's punching and I block. Think of, he comes to punch and you just put your elbow 
right in front of his face. So you can have a choice. If he's punching with this, I can do it from this elbow or from this elbow. It doesn't really matter. You can't really make a mistake. As long as you, you're not thinking of his hand as much as putting the elbow in front of your face. If you do wish to put your elbow, when it comes to punch, and you're coming straight through, you can then continue elbowing. If you want to elbow and back elbow, you can come back and forth all you want to, to practice. You can get different elbow techniques together. If you are this close to somebody, which isn't this close, which we were talking about before, you can be in this position and come straight through with your elbow. And come straight through with your elbow, it can really penetrate. And if you hit a bag like this, you always want to be able to, if he has both hands up, and I, I want to hit him with my elbow, I also, I have a, a V here, so this is protecting me from his punches. And if he punches from the other side, it's, it's going to come up because it gets reflected from here. So there's nothing wrong with coming with the elbows, or you could have been like, put your hands in the air and come straight in to utilize your elbows. So there's lots of ways that you can utilize your elbows as a, a strategy or theory in your confrontations. Now sometimes people punch around. So if he's coming to punch around, the same thing. You point your elbow out to where the punch is. Now if you're practicing with somebody and they're actually really swinging hard, it's, it's, it can really hurt them. Because if you get your elbow in the point of the arm, you know, it can really hurt. So if he's coming, he may be coming, although he may be this close and his punch is coming right around. So when he comes around, the same thing. You always bring your elbow in this position. If then if I wanted to bring my elbow this position, but you can't turn it this way because then he can come around me and be in this position. So this elbow is more straight this way, not a turning this way. That would be a mistake there. So make sure if he's punching around that you can attack his arm with your elbow. If you're, if you're not nice, if you mean to hurt somebody, you just make sure that they hit the point of your elbow. If you're training with a training partner, you just make sure that your, arm, your elbow point goes above the arm. So it'll give you that opportunity. So if he's round punching, make sure that you bring your elbow, guard the punch. Each time when he comes to punch, you're in this position where you could elbow from either arm. So at the same time as that you're turning this, this way to block the elbow, your other elbow is turning here but not turning far enough so that you're going to turn your back to your opponent. So make sure that when he comes to punch, you strike him with your elbow from the other side. You're striking him with the elbow into his forearm and in that position here. But remember, don't turn this far so that you're opening your back up to your opponent. So when he comes to roundhouse, you're in this position from the other side. You're elbowing from this position, striking him with your elbow. Another theory and strategy we, we utilize is called slingshot. It's like you're connected, connected to an elastic band or a slingshot, the Acme uh, band that Coyote <laughs> used. So if, and why you do this, this theory is from somebody who's indecisive. They're like, he's got his hands up and I'm like, I want to hit him, but I don't want to trade off with him. Like, uh, the second thing that we did was this slide techniques where we're exploding into each other and it's, uh, I'm, I'm a bit worried about exploding into this guy because he's bigger than me and I don't want him to have a crash of the titan sort of of us both exploding in at the same time. So since I'm indecisive, my motion has to be in and out. So whether I'm coming this way to move away from him or if he's coming to punch me, as I move to here, I'm moving straight through here. So, but I, you don't stop, it's a sprint. So when he comes to punch me, it's I sprint through and hit him. Now, as I'll slow it down, when he came to punch me, as I moved out of the way from the punch, I know that before we are doing sticking techniques or, do, or doing re redirection techniques, there's all different theories and strategies to defend yourself against different people. So everything has a positive and a negative and you've got to understand 
to use your positives for yourself. In this situation, when he came to punch, I moved and I loaded off my back leg and I exploded straight through into his head. That allows me to get my technique. Because I know that if I want to hit this big guy, I can't just hit him like this. It's, it's, you know, I might bother him a bit, but it's not going to really affect him. I have to hit him with my full body. So if he's coming from the other side, as he's coming, I explode in, striking him. Now you can explode in from either side. As long as in, in slow motion, when he came to punch, I came off his back leg here. My, my body weight doesn't change all the way so that I'm here. I'm springing. I'm, when, I, when I move my body, it's actually springing it. I don't move my body and then attack. You've got to make sure when you're doing this that when it comes to punch, you're moving your body, exploding in. It's not like changing your center of gravity to this place. Your center of gravity never goes to this place. It's just a bounce off. You bounce off that back leg and explode in. So you have a choice. If he, he comes to punch, I could move back and then come in with a kick if I wanted to. But since we're doing hand techniques, he comes to punch, I just move far enough away to avoid his punch and explode in with my own punch. So as long as you can time it out so that, you know, when your opponent comes to punch you, you can go as far as his punch can reach. But when you get to this point, your legs should be dug down like this because you should be coming in to punch him this way or coming in to punch him this way. When you're coming into punching him, just like our other theories and strategies, if I'm coming low, I'm guarding this arm here. If I'm coming high, I'm guarding this arm here. So make sure that if you want to practice this, actually, you could come like this. You can come to punch. You can bounce through and come with a clothesline if you wanted, if somebody was more to your size. You're, you're fighting somebody who's much bigger than you. You don't want to come and just start wailing rock and suck and robots with this guy because he's going to knock your block off. But you'd like to hit him with full force. So you got to make sure that you hit him in a position where he can't hit you. So always make sure that when he comes to punch, you're exploding through and coming straight through with that force. And those are the slingshot techniques. Another strategy that's utilized is called windmill. And windmill is a bunch of swinging and revolving Punch is just trying to distract somebody so that you can create an opening. So if I'm fighting this guy and his hands are up and I'm like, okay, I don't really, let's say, turn him up so he's not really leaving me any openings that I want. So I want to, I want him to create an opening for me. So I'm going to put out a hand here so that he could go to block it. So whether, if, if I'm dancing around and, I, and I'm get, coming into a position like this, or I'm just throw, throwing a bunch of things out here, just trying to get somebody to guard. It's, it's almost like a, a fake sort of. It's a, I, I'm going to go for a fake, but I really want to punch here. So it's like I'm, I'm tossing this out here so I could punch here. So it's everything. And if somebody's really tight and they're not letting you do anything, you, you have to dan dance around and then sink them. So you're just trying to throw a bunch of meaningless punches because you want him to chase it. So every theory and strategy that is, there's always going to be ways to beat it. So if somebody's dancing around with a bunch of flurry fast punches, what we usually do is go to the second session and we just sort of explode in and hit them. If somebody's really, if we are really fast, why we would be really fast is I might fast away. If his hands are out, like when we're doing the fast snappy techniques, I'm not trying to snap them inside here where there's meat, I'm trying to snap him and move away, or snap him to come on either side, to come up beside him. It's a bit different. So every time there's reasons for doing these different theories and strategies that you have to be aware of. So if his hands are here, and I'm looking at, at this, and I'm thinking, well, if I went to hit him, he could hit me. So I'm just going to come in to do a little hit, because I want him to block. So when I come here, I come like this and I'm coming for a hook. I'm guarding this hand at the same time. So it's, it's sort of like I go for a head, I go for a head, and then hook it. So it's these type of uh, strategies that you're doing. Sometimes you may want to go high just because you want to hit low, 
or if you're going to go for this low spot here, maybe you want to come here. So make sure that if you're practicing these type of techniques, it's just usually a bunch of fast little flick to try to get somebody chasing it, chasing the air. So you, you come, I'm not even committing myself close enough to hit him really. I'm just coming, coming just to make, make his, ha make his ha hands move. And if I get, get his hands move, then, then I can sink him. So that's another strategy that's utilized. So we have all these different strategies, and it's very important that we have different strategies. A lot of people, they're one-dimensional. Uh, what I mean by they fight in a certain way that they say, well, this is the way I feel. So I'm, I'm a hyper type of person, so I fight snappy. Or somebody's a big, heavy person, they just think, well, I'm a big, heavy person, I'm just gonna fight like Jack the Bear. So everybody has, has a preference. And uh, some people are relaxed and they think that they're just gonna circle and use their opponent's energy against them. So every time that everything has a positive and a negative, what I mean is like, if we're both hard and I, I come to punch him or he comes to punch me and we're both locked in so that we're not utilizing, it, it's, especially, it's not so bad for us, we're pretty much the same size. But if somebody's a lot bigger and they have more mass than you and they lock in and their body hits you and you're locked in, you're not going to be able to go through them. So if, if he's punching me hard, I just come in loose and I snap him and came around the back of him and, and hit him. Because if he was punching me hard and I punched hard, then we're both equal again. So you have to be able to utilize the technique. If he's a snappy type of person, we're both, we're both snapping, we're both, it's an entertaining uh, like flight weight fight in boxing. Really watch, watching two people just snapping away on each other is very effective. But the thing about being snappy and these flicky snappy techniques, it has no body now. So your strikes are always surface te techniques. They're not going through somebody as in like the slide techniques that we were doing. So if somebody's uh, snappy, when he's snappy, I'm just gonna explode straight through and hit him with everything I got. Because if he's snappy and I'm just trying to block, block him and he just keeps hitting me because I'm trying to block him and I'm too slow, it's not gonna work. So everything you have to realize that if, if he is snappy, I'm gonna probably go hard. If he's harder than me, when he comes to punch, I may redirect around him and come up in this position to take, to take him out to do my technique. So you have to have a, an option for everything because you never know who you're going to fight. And quite often you can feel it just by somebody's presence if they're going to be a high energy, snappy type of fighter or somebody just slowly stalking you or somebody who's sort of indecisive trying to move back and forth and in and out and stuff like this. So every time you can determine how somebody moves to have a good idea of how they're going to continue fighting. And most people are limited to one or the other. What I'm saying is if you learn enough of these theories and strategies that you can understand that if somebody is faster than you, you're not going to try to fight them with the same speed. You're going to try to trade off with them, trade his little snap punch with your complete locked up body exploding punch through somebody. You have to be able to counter whatever anybody is doing. If they are faster than you or if they're looser than you, if somebody is loose and, and he was really good at, let's say, redirecting me. So I go to punch him and he moves around and redirects me to do a technique because he's taking my energy. So if somebody is fighting me that way, I'm not going to give them this type of body energy for him to redirect. I'm just going to sort of snap and come back and try to draw him into me so that I can snap around him a few more times. So you have to be, so you have to be multifaceted in doing your technique so that you can have a defense for your opponent's strengths or weaknesses.